And because I passed out, I didn't answer to their knocks on the doors. And they thought that something is wrong. So they came to wake me up and for whatever reason, handcuffed me. And the funniest thing was I was in total shock and drunk still and, and whatnot. And they left the room and they said, uh, sorry for the disturbance. Uh, uh, would you like your sandwich to be warmed up for you again, sir? To which I replied, no, oh, thank you. <laughs> Greetings one and all. My name is VV aka Ville Herman Nivala and now I'm at the headquarters of Diffus enjoying baby pictures, what we call it in Finnish, which means I'm going through old, old stuff from the age of, um, I guess, late 90s and try to, uh, if I can, react to them in other ways than crying and shrieking. But here we go. The first one is him, Wicked Game, the German version from 1998. German label was very, very sort of, they had their own vision, how we should look like as a band. And then the UK came along a bit later. So we did a few versions that were a bit different. And at times it was really schizophrenic. They looked really different and, the, and, the, and shooting videos is not fun usually. The artist doesn't have a lot of say. And I'm kind of happy how it is these days because YouTube and all that has changed the whole, how you spend your money. I remember we did one with him called Rip Out the Wings of a Butterfly. I'm not sure if I'm gonna, Check that out later, but it was like half a million dollars. And these days the budgets are like, what, for a good video, maybe 15, 20 grand in euros. So it's quite a difference. Yeah, those were the days. A lot of money was thrown out. It's like the, I can only imagine how it was in the 80s. You know, it was like the 90s plus cocaine. So, let's see what happens with this one. Oh, interesting. Considering escape from this world and we wait. The video was done for the Roland Emmerich film called uh, 13th Floor. We had the chance of putting one song in there. And uh, I remember it was funny because when they asked for a song, the only song we had re ready was, was uh, Join Me in Death. And the record label at the time hated it. They were like, it's a terrible song. It's never going to make it. It's never going to work out at all. And plus they hated the mix. They were like, it sounds terrible. It's, it's confusing and, and we hate it and all of a sudden when it became number one they told of course to everybody that yeah we knew it all along and uh you know they were the best services it, it was quite funny and then i remember when the single went to number one me and miga the bass player of him we were at a bar we got a call from germany they were having a big party somewhere in in near the dortmund area and they were like popping champagne bottles and we only had it was still the time of the finnish mark and deutsch mark as well so we had few marks and we were able to get one beer that we could share for the uh, share for the uh, celebration of being number one. But that's uh, those are the memories during this time. Baby, Young and pretty. It looks like Narnia. It's like a fantasy setup. Uh, we are that was done in London as well. We call it the Ice Castle version. The, the director was a cool guy called the Bill Yukic. And we ended up partying like madmen in, uh, in Amsterdam. I passed out in my room and the people at the hotel thought that, uh, you, know, um, you know, they were starting to get worried about me or whatever. And, uh, and they actually, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night being handcuffed. So they had like the police and paramedics coming into the room. And uh, the funniest thing was they did that because before I passed out in my room, uh, I'd ordered a sandwich. And because I passed out, I didn't answer to their knocks on the doors. And they thought that something is wrong. So they came to wake me up and for whatever reason, handcuffed me. And the funniest thing was I was in total shock and drunk still and, and whatnot. And they left the room and they said, uh, sorry for the disturbance. Uh, uh, would you like your sandwich to be warmed up for you again, sir? To which I replied, no, thank you. <laughs> I wonder which version this is. Oh, okay. And uh, this version, the German label hated. They hated it so much. I remember they wanted naked women in the video. 
which I always thought that is such an 80s thing. And it's probably due to the record label people then wanting to be at the video sessions to be at like a striptease show or whatever. Yeah, I remember the, uh, the German version, at least one of them, they added a corpse at a mortuary to this, which was, I thought that was so tasteless. And uh, then I think the one that they showed at that time was, um, was so that they used this video, like a, like a James Bond intro. They used this video and used a film projector to project these images onto the bodies of naked women. That's, uh, I remember we were fighting about it, but I can't remember who won. Let's see what happens with this. So this one's called Love Letting. Um, one with the sheep. It's the first thing of, of of, of this solo album that was just released in January. And uh, oh, I wanted the video to have an animal because I think that real animals look beautiful and they're interesting to look at. In a lot of rock and pop videos, you have a, if it's a male singer, you have a beautiful girl. And I think that that's, we've seen that a few times. I, I'm, I'm not sure who came up with the idea of the sheep. And black sheep, it's probably in Germany, it's the same. It's like the symbol for the outsider. I thought that's a brilliant idea. I'm, I'm allergic to animals, but uh, for whatever ever reason, I wasn't allergic to that one. Yeah, it was fun. It's always fun to do, if, if at all possible, to do something weird with, uh, with videos. And uh, having a sheep at the set was totally something weird. We also used this weird, it wasn't a green screen, but this big lead, I don't know what you, what you call it. They did a Mandalorian on a similar one. So I played everything on the, on the arm by myself and I, I recorded it as well. So a lot of stuff that's new to me. So then again, I was sort of blessed that we had COVID. So there was a lot of time to work on it and because nobody was able to tour or anything like that. So yeah, it, it, it was different. It was quite solitary. You know, there was no band around and we weren't able to tell each other jokes and, and go out for a coffee or whatever. So, you know, it's a, um, I can't compare. I think this is like a transitional moment, like the next step going somewhere else. I don't know where, I don't have any plan Bs or like, a, it's just say, see where this takes me and then See how it's going to sound afterwards, but um, but no, I, I think we we ended what him was for a reason. We did that for a long, long time, and then maybe uh, our priorities changed. People had families, you know. We started when we were teenagers. We were drinking beer together and playing rock and roll and dreaming of uh, of being able to record a demo or or hear our song on a radio or whatever. It always starts with little steps, and then you the first gig and first album or whatever. It, it was a good time to end it because we still loved the music. We still got along, so we weren't enemies. Like you hear so many stories about bands that are really, they're not sharing the cars anymore. And then it took me a while to get back to this. I, I didn't know, know what, what to do at first. And, and uh, it took me a good three years, you know, to, to start writing. And that's the weird stuff I came up with, you know? <laughs> so that's it, folks. My name is Vivi aka Villa Hermanivalo. I'm here at the um, headquarters of the Diffuse. Uh, they made me watch my own videos. And uh, it's a, it's a, it was a painful yet exhilarating process. And I hope that you had a good time while uh, enjoying these weird little bits and bobs. Catch you later and uh, much love to one and all. Ciao.